Hey everyone, it's Ronella Hernandez with Web3 TV and I am in Paris at Paris Blockchain Week. I am sitting here with Itai, who is the Managing Director at Market Across. How are you? Yeah, it's a pleasure. Always fun to be in Paris. It's my uh, fourth Paris Blockchain Week. Uh, uh, yeah, had the pleasure of uh, collaborating, helping with the PR at the event and the team is around doing their job. So yeah, always fun, always great. So how does, how does this year's edition compare to past editions? I think that's a great question. So first of all, currently we're still at the first day, so uh, to be determined. I think that, um, well, markets are looking better. I think going around last year, people were a bit, you know, uh, they're, they're, were a bit more gloomy. So I think now people are a lot more optimistic. But now it's also a lot more about pressure. So in the past two years, we're talking about infrastructure and how we need to build now that it's, you know, bear markets. All right, now it's bull markets. Now it's our time to shine. A lot of people here understand that they have a certain window right now to meet their users, meet their tech, and if they miss that, they're gonna they're, they're gonna miss their opportunity. So I think it's like that's very interesting. Um, and yeah, just I think it's just interesting to see who who stayed put, especially a lot of Web two brands that were looking into crypto and launched their NFTs or whatever. And there are people that you haven't seen in two three years, and now they're back and saying, "Oh, we find this cool again." So yeah, I think it's interesting. Um, I think Paris Block Week is, is a good mix of like corporate suits, Web3 builders, and just like a lot of brands, NFTs or whatever. So it's a good mix. It's not like full degen, which I like, right. but it's also not full bankers, which I always find weird because I thought that we're here to replace the bankers, but never mind. No, you're right. It is a good mix. I think being in France, there's a big Web3 NFT gaming community. So you get to see people from all over the industry. And since Market Across is the main PR sponsor, I do have to give it to you guys. It's a great turnout today. I'm sure the rest of the few days too. So I'm excited about that. And Ita, I wanted to ask you, since you moderated a bunch of panels so far already on day one, have you learned anything, anything interesting or fun set up on stage that you can share with us? Well, that's a great question. I think that, uh, first of all, it's, it's great because there's panels. I already see people that their second or third year that even with me. So like even looking at yourself, I've known you for years and you see everyone kind of grow into their own thing and do their own thing. And I think that what I'm seeing right now, especially uh, in, in, a, in like the panels here, is that everyone that has stayed in the past few years in the industry and has actually been building and been keeping doing that, now has something interesting to give and to launch. So you're talking to people and if it was like Web3 Gaming is like, oh yeah, it's taking us two, three years to build a game. All right, n n now it's happening. So it's very interesting because people are going to move from the promise stage to delivery. And uh, and that's going to see. And then their communities have been asking for these things for years. Now are they actually going to like it? So I think it's it's crunch time. It's like a lot of things are, are shipping. And uh, yeah, I think that it's also frightening for a lot of a lot of founders because sometimes being in that pre-launch stage is almost uh, it's addictive because you didn't fail yet. So um, yeah, I think it's very interesting. I've learned that we're going, especially on the gaming side, we're going to be seeing actual products and games being released in the next few months. But then we're going to see if people actually like playing these games because until now, most of Web3 games have kind of sucked. So yeah, let's see. I had gaming panels this morning, so that's why. I I'm looking forward to fun games too. Yeah. All right, so from a marketer's perspective, yeah. given that now you say that people are, are, you see who's loyal maybe and who's not to the industry, right? So what would you say is the main, like how has marketing evolved mainly? Or, and, sure. and like how do you see it now? How, how should companies maybe be marketing and promoting their, their products given that we are in the bull market now? Perfect. So actually like we're more in the PR or whatever space and, but what I'm going to do talk is actually completely against that. Not yet, it's different. So in the classical Web2 world, one of the biggest things is user acquisition. So most tech companies, especially gaming companies, they don't build a brand or do PR. They go and buy ads on, on different applications and then optimize or whatever. Very hard to do in Web3, but it looks like in the past year, Web3 has understood how to do user acquisition. It's called airdrops. <laughs> it's No, it's called giving people something. Instead of me selling you your NFT or your token, we're going to give it to you. And then by that, we're going to acquire you as a user. And I find that really interesting. And I actually think that Web2 companies are going to start looking at that. But I think that... It's even stupid to call it an airdrop right now. It's points, it's all whatever. But everything that's happening in that space right now is I think really interesting. And you're seeing like user acquisition for Web3 via not buying ads on Google by giving people something and activating them. 
So I think that's really cool. I'm really excited to see how that works out. And that has actually nothing to do with PR. It was what we do, but. But that's, that's what you're seeing in the space. Yeah, airdrops are huge. I'm trying to get into a few myself, but we'll see if I succeed. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, one last question. Since we are at Paris Blockchain Week, I wanted to ask what is one of your favorite things and your least favorite things about Paris or France? Sure. So uh, my favorite thing, personally, is uh, the food, and it's not the French food. So we usually stay uh, right next year. There's a neighborhood that has all the Asian restaurants. So for me, I have udon for breakfast and then Korean barbecue for lunch. So for me, I love, love the food. Uh, I can't get enough of the food in Paris. Um, and also, specifically, I know it's going to sound like whatever, um, but I know the founders and the organizers of the conference very well. I've known them for years and they're true conviction players. And I, I just like, I like working with people I like working with. So we have a good connection in that. And I like when people I like succeed. And what's your least favorite thing about it? My least favorite historically, um, the like NFT PFP side of it. There used to be, and now this year a bit less, but it used to be a bit too NFT ish for me. And, um, again, I have nothing. Well, maybe I do have something a bit against NFTs. Especially just as a PR and marketing company, there's not a lot to do with NFTs. So, okay, you're out there. That's great. Then th that's it. We're done. All right. All right. Fair. Good point. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Itai. Thank you very much. <laughs>